Welcome back to the channel, everybody. Welcome back to another video. And today, it's another I told you so video, and one that I felt compelled to share with you all. Because for years now, I've been screaming from the top of my lungs about markups. This is not something new just in this last month. And I've been harping on it. I've been harping on it heavily because I see that the dealers are finally acquiescing and realizing that they cannot get that much money for these cars anymore. And I'm out there proving it every single day despite some of you extremely, you know, hard-headed, concrete skulled <laughs> people that still want to argue with me in the comments that, no, it's not true. Like, you want to believe that the dealers can still get 50 over or 20 over or 10,000 or 5,000 in add-ons despite all of the the proof that I've shared with you all. But that's okay. You keep believing that while the rest of us keep going and buying cars for MSRP or below, which is happening more and more. Every single day I'm hearing more and more. I wish I could just do a video where I just posted all the comments and all the Instagram direct messages telling me that you got your car for MSRP or below, but that video would take forever because it is literally so many. I'm not even exaggerating. With that said, over the last, I don't know, three, four years, I've been screaming that I've been screaming about markups and flying out of the state and driving cars back from other states because I was unwilling, unwilling to pay the markups. People still watch my video and said, but but Brad, I can't get one, and it's the last ones ever. And, and and if I don't pay a markup, I won't ever get one. This is the last time they're ever making them. Don't care how I want it now. This is literally what it sounds like when I read these comments. And I will tell you, there's, I would say, hundreds of those comments over the last few years of people just whining that I've got to pay the markup or I can't get the car. I can't get it. What the hell? Like, seriously, like, do you have to have it so bad that you're willing to take an unnecessary financial risk? Which is what leads me to the video that I'm going to share with you today. And am I passionate about this? Am I frustrated? Yes, I am, because I do not believe that in any way, shape, or form will these mass-produced fairly cheaply built, engines built in Mexico, assembled in Canada, plastic cars with injection molded dashes, and old screens, old technology, <laughs> door handles that I have to fight with to get in the car. I mean, that these things are going to skyrocket in value because they're such a rare machine. There's hundreds of thousands of scat packs, hundreds of thousands of Hellcats, and RTs, and everything all over the planet. So these are not rare cars. These will not be barn finds 30 years from now where somebody is, wow, I found the most coveted car in the world. But I get it. The salespeople have done a great job on you. And here's where you get burned. And I'm gonna get to the point now because it's it just breaks my heart to have to say I told you so to any of you when you get completely sauteed and fried on a car that you thought was going to be one of the best investments ever and it was going to go up in value and that you were going to be totally fine despite paying $25,000 of markups. And here's why. I have a gentleman. I'm going to keep his name private because I'm sure he doesn't want everybody to know and I'm not going to put him out there and he hasn't you know, told me I can so I'm just going to keep that quiet. But I want to share this example with you all because it will absolutely scare the living daylights out of you from paying a markup and from frankly paying too much for any car and making some necessary shifts in how you do things when you buy a car, especially a car like these, to protect yourself, your family, and your financial well-being in the future. So let me read this. Here's what he sends me. They stole my Durango Hellcat yesterday at the Dodge dealer and another white one. Didn't even get it back from the attempt at my house. They deprogrammed my keys, so the first step was to get it to Dodge and have them reprogram my keys. And then my body shop could fix the window that was broken out and paint everything. But on the way to the body shop, the check engine light came on. So after they did the work, I had it towed back to the dealer to fix the issue. And it was there for about 10 days. 
and now it's gone on a Sunday, 1.30 p.m. in broad daylight. Let me translate that. It was stolen, along with another Durango from the dealership. Last time I saw it was six weeks ago. Here's what's really fun, folks. I had the low jack on it, but it was at the dealer five times for an issue they can't seem to fix, so I was being offered a Lemon Law buyout, but they made me remove my low jack to work on it. They removed the low jack to work on it. That makes no sense whatsoever why they would think that was related to anything wrong with the car. It's like blame someone else, right? Let's blame low jack. Let's take it off. Unbelievable. Like, that person should just be fired today. So they took it off. So now it's gone without a tracker. He says, pretty upset. A yeah, lemon law situation. It's been to the dealer five times for check engine light. This is a 2021 Durango Hellcat. Five times for check engine light issues, and it was there two months, and they changed valve body, and I had the car back for a month, and I was hoping it was fixed, but clearly not. They made me have the low jack removed so they could rule out, and now there's no tracker on it. I did pay a markup because it's a 2021 and got tricked with the one-off year. Paid twelve thousand five hundred over, so there was no black black ones anywhere when I got it. The lemon lemon law payout was going to be one hundred fourteen thousand dollars, so I was going to get most of my money back, assuming most meaning tax, license, everything. It was probably well over, maybe close to one hundred twenty thousand dollars, one hundred fifteen to one hundred twenty thousand dollars into this car, into this Durango. And what he means by <laughs> he got tricked, a lot of people did. So 2021 was going to be the only year, again, last car, last year ever for the Durango Hellcat, and you're going to be the only one with it. There will never be any more. And then we found out in 2023, just kidding, there's going to be a whole bunch more. Then we found out in 2023, oh, just kidding, we're going to keep pumping those things out in 2024 as well. So yeah, that kind of kills the values. Today, Durangos are going for eighty dollars to $85,000, I've seen them for cheaper depending on how many miles are on the cars and the condition of them. So he says, my insurance said, if it's not recovered in 21 days, I get market value payout, which is ridiculous because I can't replace it and I don't want a used one. So here's the deal. Market value payout means they're gonna go out there and they're gonna look at what they're going for. They're gonna also go to Mannheim and these other, other houses and find out what they're selling for. And they're gonna probably lowball them, probably in the $75,000 range. If he's very lucky, they're gonna come up to what current asking prices are, which is around $85,000. Remember, he's into this thing for probably close to 115 dollars to $120,000. So that is, let's just do the math, it's at 30, 30, 30 to $35,000 cash, <sighs> gone, and exacerbated by the markup, significantly destroyed by the markup. So, I mean, he'd already be upside down, already be be upside, be, be in bad shape, but we kind of expect that with cars. But adding the markup in just makes it so much worse. So he doesn't want to use one, and the car is such a target anyways. I mean, they tried to steal it from his house, stole it from the dealership. I mean, it's just, what a nightmare. And uh, and I feel like I should get a, get a rate enough to replace it. Anyways, the other issue is, let's say he goes and buys one today. Well, interest rates back in in 2021 were significantly better, right folks, than they are today. So even if they gave him enough money to go buy another one, paid off his loan, and then if he's got a loan, assuming he does, and he goes and takes another loan, then that loan's gonna be at a significantly higher interest rate than the rate that he had on that one. So now he's paying more in car payment, that's just, just more bad on top of bad. So, and he goes on with uh, what his other cars are, and I just told him, you know, so sorry for your loss. I mean, that's horrible. I feel bad when this happens to any of you, but I've been saying this forever. I, I even talked about this whole negative gap issue that, that required that you insist on them providing some gap. If you want to pay a markup, that's cool. Take some of that money that you're getting, Mr. or Mrs. Dealership, and pay for my gap insurance to ensure that if and when my car gets stolen, considering these are the most stolen cars in America, that I will absolutely be covered, that I will get all of my money out of it and not be screwed, meaning everything 
everything between what I owe and and my uh, and what I paid. So the challenge, though, with gap insurance is gap insurance sometimes they may not, especially two years later, give you what you paid for the car. They might just make sure that you don't have a negative left over from your loan balance. So another reason why sometimes putting a lot of money down may not be a good thing. But check with your gap insurance provider to find out what exactly they'll cover under what circumstances. But they're not going to give you what you paid for the car. They're generally there to cover the gap between your loan and what the insurance company paid you so that you're not stuck on the hook still owing the bank after the insurance company pays off the car. Hope that makes sense. So remember, here's what happened. Paid $115,000, $120,000 for the thing. Likely did not get gap insurance. Doesn't sound like he did. Car gets stolen. Thank goodness. And here's the, the silver lining that I told him. The fact that it was stolen from the dealership, the fact that they took, they made you take off your low jack, I would hold them responsible for covering the difference between the what the insurance gives you and what the what the uh, what the car is worth, what the value of the car is worth, so that you could go out and buy a brand new 2022, or at the very least, I'm sorry, 2023 or 2024, or at the very least, be made whole for this disaster because it's not his fault. They took off the if. if at the very least, the LoJack was on there. They might be able to recover the car. In what condition? Who knows? But at least they might be able to get it back. At this point, it's probably not coming back, and it's getting totaled out. So think of it like this. If you pay a markup, you got to make sure you've got gap insurance. But here's the big problem. Make sure the gap insurance is even going to cover what you put down in cash, because it's very likely not going to do that, and you're still going to lose that money. If you're one of those hard-headed concrete scold guys, that think these cars are gonna go to the moon in value, so I'm gonna pay a markup because I've gotta have my Hellcat Red Eye Jailbreak wide body, so I don't mind paying that $25,000 over. Or I'm gonna buy my King Daytona for $150,000 because I saw him for $200,000, and that's a great deal because it's gonna go up in value despite the fact that all it is is a, is a Red Eye Jailbreak wide body with some stickers on it. But hey, I need to get that car. Then at the very least, Get your gap insurance and realize that there's things that are beyond your control. And one thing that's beyond your control is getting that thing stolen. So make sure you keep it in your garage locked up. Make sure you get the uh, Destroyer 1320 uh, neutral strap. I'll put a link in the description below to protect your car from getting stolen. Make sure you put the low jack on and maybe have another redundant system like car lock or something or track hawk. And guard that car with your life because... If you paid a big markup and you paid MSRP, so you've you've got double whammied here, and maybe you paid some add-ons, and maybe you put a bunch of that money down in cash, it's likely even your gap insurance isn't gonna save you. You're just screwed. You're just out of that money because insurance is gonna go, and despite you telling them, but it's the last ones ever, and it's gonna go up in value, and it's a it's a unique rare car when it's not. And I love these cars. You know I love these cars, but they're cheap. They're not going to go up in value. Your insurance company's gonna laugh at you when you tell them, but I want the 150,000 I paid for my King Daytona, and they're gonna come back and go, it's a red-eyed jailbreak, man. I mean, they're, they're selling for, you know, $100,000. MSRP is, you know, $90,000. You know, we're not gonna give you, you know, $150,000 for that car. There's no justification. You got screwed by the dealership, and that's not our fault at State Farm or Farmers or Geico or whoever. They're not gonna. They're not gonna eat it just because you, your brain was too freaking mushed up in your head to 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 use common sense and not pay that giant markup. So with that, everybody, I'm sorry for being so emphatically passionate about this, but I I hate to see people get so fried, so utterly fried, and then to think that, and I love Dodge, but I don't like what they've done with the the Durango coming back. If you think for one second there's not a chance that they're not going to bring something back again that's going to compete with this thing and suddenly just, just decimate the value of these cars, then go ahead and look back at the original Demon, 2018 Demon people, go look at the Durango people who were absolutely convinced that that car was never coming back, and whatever happens, maybe it's not the Hemi, maybe it's something else, but whatever it is, 
let's not count Tim Kaniskas out, that something might come back that everybody's going to love that's not electric and you're going to be sitting on a car like I am that's just plummeting in value. And now we're sitting at almost $7 in California in, in gas prices and that's not helping either. So with that, everybody, I hope, I hope this video helps somebody out there and stops you. If for any other reason than knowing that if your car gets stolen or if you total your car, that you will just kiss that money away. So even if you believe you're going to be able to sell it for more money, if it's totaled or stolen, that, that opportunity is completely gone, even though I believe that opportunity does not exist. Second, you buy that car, it's worth less money. So with that, please like, subscribe, comment, share this video, and save someone else a headache who's sitting here in the dealership thinking, but I want the car so bad, I have to have it. It's got a badge underneath the hood. Oh, no! That's stuck to the plastic that can be taken out. Help them. Send them this video. See you in the next one. Bye-bye.